Hello, thanks for joining. My name is AJ Me. I am a Principal Technology Specialist for Microsoft here in the US. And I wanted to, to spend a couple of moments on a quick follow-up on the, the previous Power BI demonstration that I had, uh, I had walked you through uh, around pulling in some data from Craigslist and doing some manipulations and transformations of the data in Power Query and ultimately creating some sort of visual of the items for sale on Craigslist in some map in, in Power Map. And I started in that session to talk about some of the, the merits of, of Power Query and why it's an important part of the, the Power BI story. Um, I brought up the fact that I thought Power Pivot could do everything that you would ever want to do in a, in a self-service BI type of, of mindset. But as I started to peel back the onion with Power Query, I started to notice a few things. I started to notice the breadth of data sources that are available to me that are a little bit outside of what Power Pivot can provide to me out of the box. We talked about some of the abilities for us to uh, to impart some transformations and ETL-like manipulations of the data inbound to our model prior to the point where we start do, doing our business modeling and power pivot. We also talked about the concept of doing um, merging and appending data from multiple locations and presenting it to power pivot as if it's one thing. In my case, I had some data from Philadelphia, from New Jersey and from Delaware, three different data feeds, but it was presented upstream to power pivot as if it was one animal using the append function in, in Power Query. I wanted to show one other particular use case that I found interesting um, for, for Power Query, and that's when you're starting to pull in data that's um, going to be returned to you in the form of JSONs. If you look at the, the Power BI demos that are available to you now, the walkthrough um, calls for um, an example where you use Yelp as a data source. So Yelp exposes an API. Um, at the moment, there are some questions as to whether or not it's providing latitudes and longitudes back to you. Um, so I went in a slightly different direction um, just for the purposes of today's demonstration. What I'd like to do is pull in some data from Foursquare. So Foursquare, if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, you're probably familiar with the service, but Foursquare also provides an open API that's available to the developer to, uh, to post as well as to, to read data. For our purposes, we're more concerned with reading data. And in our case, there is a particular, um, a particular call that we'd like to make to the, to the list of venues. So because there's um, some, uh, some security considerations with, with OAuth, in order to tap into some of the API functions on Foursquare, you can't always get the, the check-in data. But it's very easy to get to to uh, to the list of venues that are um, within a certain radius of a of a latitude and longitude, and so there's a a top level um, set of functions in their API around venues. So being able to search is one of the the functions that we'll be using as part of today's object. So um, you'll see that it takes a latitude and longitude. It's going to take um, a few other parameters here. What's the size of the radius that you're trying to uh, to encapsulate as part of your um, as part of your query, and it's going to return a list of venues back to you. And this is the result list is brought to you back in a, in a JSON format. And Power Pivot is not going to be able to parse through that and figure out sort of the embedded table structures that, that live underneath that. And so Power Query, when that is part of our tool set, we can easily tap into, into that. So what we'd like to do is supply a URL here. And the URL is going to go straight to that API. And let me show you what's going on here. So there's it's, it's through HTTPS, so it's a secure call to their API. There's a function called Venues. And it's taking a, f a few parameters. It's taking a latitude, which is 40.03 something something, and the longitude is negative 75 point something. That's basically Philadelphia, my home base here. And it takes a few other parameters, most notably a client ID and a client secret. Now, for cases where you are using Foursquare API calls that 
aren't going through the OAuth protocol, you have to embed these client ID and client secret, um, very long, good like um, strings into your query in order to make it all work. And then finally, it, it takes an attribute here around the date. So the V equals is, you know, showing me everything as of yesterday from the venues list. And so when I click on the OK button, the first question it asks me is about, um, you know, how, what's the what's the authentication protocol? In this case, because we are using um, the embedded client ID and the client secret that Foursquare provide to the developer, we can kind of bypass that. We can use some other alternate authorization techniques that are available to us in Power Query, which we don't need for, for this particular example. And notice what comes back this time. Um, you get a pretty blank screen. You'll get a JSON document being returned to you with a record for the meta and a record for the response. And you see if I bring up the stages right now, it's pretty vanilla, it's, it's parsing, this is JSON. And if you know anything about JSON, it's, it's kind of like the, uh, the Russian dolls that kind of um, encapsulate within one another. It's, you can have objects within objects within objects. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna expose the response object. This is where the, the meat of the, of the feed will, will come from. And so we're gonna inspect this venues list. So we're kind of traversing down the hierarchy here a little bit. So you'll see along the navigator, we went from the response object to the venues object. Now you see a, a record list coming back from, from the JSON um, response here. And what I'd like to do here is you, you inspect on each one of these guys and you can see these are the attributes that might be of interest to us when we start doing whatever downstream analysis. So roll this back up here a little bit. And what I'd like to do is convert this to a table. And when I convert this to a table, you notice that I get this little, I don't even know what the, uh, how to explain the, the icon here. It looks like it's sort of a split icon. When I click on that, it gives me all of the fields in that, in that venues record that I can expose as part of this, this, um, this slice of data. So when I go and do that, the parsing is done. So I've got a, an ID, I've got name of the location. Um, you'll notice that there are some embedded objects here. There's a contact object, we'll expand that. We'll expand the location object all the way. And those were just those little split icons that appeared in the, uh, the column headers once again. And so I can keep on going on and on and on. Um, you get the idea here how we can quickly pull data into into our analysis. So there might be I forget which one has the actual latitude and longitude of the of the thing we're looking at. I exposed all the record objects here. For the moment, yes. And so when I bring this in, it's a fairly small slice of data. I didn't really specify a radius when I um, when I pulled in the the URL or called the URL to the to the search function in Foursquare's API. But it, the data is here. Um, you get to see a few rows worth of data. There is a latitude and longitude. Those those a little bit further upstream than I was looking. Latitude and longitude are, are pretty much right there. And so you figure this is something we can load right into the data model and start plotting these points. I don't really have any interesting data or facts or measures to, to drive this, but just to quickly show how I could take Foursquare data and throw it onto the former GeoFlow, the, the now present power map capability of Power BI. So geography, is going to want and definitely accept a latitude and longitude coming out of Foursquare. We'll drag those two aspects into the geography box in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Click on the button that says map it and you start to see Philadelphia popping up here a little bit.
Get a little bit closer, a little bit closer. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. You can see that, you know, because we are dealing with such finely defined uh, latitudes and longitudes that it's, it's pretty much like a city block here. And so I can, if I had some interesting statistics here, for instance, if I was wrapping this around OAuth and I could pull in a, a fact around the number of check-ins at any one of these given locations, it might be something that, that would be of interest to these folks. So I wanted to show you sort of like the one other use case that I found for Power Query so far, which is dealing with inbound JSON data when you're dealing with a with a web API and it's pulling back data in a, in a very structured fashion, um, in a very, like I said, the Russian doll, the proverbial Russian doll type of fashion to be able to, to unnest the eggs, get to the point where you're seeing the actual record data and then plotting data on your visualization uh, surface of choice, whether it be a map or whether it be the, uh, the power view technology or it be just a pivot table. Um, you're, you're available and you're, you're welcome to start playing around with the technology today by going to, uh, to microsoft.com slash BI. Thanks so much. I hope you have a great day.